Matthew 21, 28. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, go to work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father? They say unto him, The first, Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye had it seen it, repented not afterward, that ye might believe him. Heavenly Father, we praise your name forever, and tremble before you and your word that changeth not. And we know that the winds of doctrines are changing. People's minds are, are, are changing. People are losing grip. People are losing fight. Lord God, I pray that you would cause a people to endure and stand firm in that which is still called true by you. I pray for every heart here that we will hear what you have to say in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 On my old route, I remember my, one of the last areas I was ever in was a kind of a, a strange area where there was a lot of like really hip kind of people, and uh, it's really really strange to be around such culturally different people than I'm used to being around because I haven't been around that kind of a scene for such a long time, and something about them really impressed me, and something. I was kind of impressed because I was starting to get strong enough to, in, in my faith that I could be around a people that was so different than myself and it didn't affect me anymore. A lot of strange vibes and spirits about them, but there was something about them that was really interesting because I, I was almost intimidated by how kind they were. A lot of these people, would, they would talk so kindly to, to people and I was just like, wow, how do they, like, wow, I need to learn how to talk like that because they, they seemed to have their people skills down so well. And then it's almost like, when, they, when people weren't looking, they would, they would talk a different way altogether. Somebody that talked so well when I was on my route, and then I seen them another time, and it was like, like I didn't even know them anymore. It was just like, it was, it's so weird. Like, and I, just, I sometimes feel like, like, you know what, sometimes I, I might not look like I'm the most uh, mature in all my ways kind of a situation, but I feel like I'm, I'm not going to lie about things. I'm, I feel like I'm not going to pretend to be something that I'm not. Do we know these people? Oh, okay. And I, I feel like at least you know what you're getting, you know? At least you know what, what you can count on. You know, if there's something that you really cared about, like this father, he says, I have an emergency. Like, there's, if you guys don't move now, we're going to lose the whole thing. I need help. I'm too old to get all this by myself. And one guy says, oh, sure, you know, to keep some kind of a peace. But it really was not even really a peace because it was, a, it was, it was just a fake peace just to get him through. Because he wasn't, he had, he had no intention of doing what it, what it, what it really costs. Okay. I've seen this movie years ago. It was a movie I totally don't recommend, and I won't tell you the name of it. But it was a really old type of, a, more of an old-fashioned film. Um, African American scene. Almost everybody in the situation was like North Carolina or whatever it was, old colonially looking situation. Some of it was really poor. And there was this guy that was really like the smooth talker, kind of the ladies' man type of guy, dressed in a suit taking a, one of those girls kind of all dolled up, ready to go out in the town. And they were walking out 
of the house together. And he does this happy smile to this young lady, little young, the little girl. Hey, baby, have a good night to you. And he's just so happy. And it just seems so nice. Seems such a pleasant guy. What a nice guy, right? Well, the auntie's watching him walk out. And as soon as the door shuts, she looks at the little girl and says, Now a dog knows he's doing wrong. And he cannot look you in the eye. Because he's got a guilty conscience. But a snake can look you right in the eye and lie to you and not feel any glimmer of withering to their own conscience. I've preached it before about a people who appear to have everything together. And I'm not the only one who said this. I got this from someone else. He calls them these happy hypocrites in the church. They're so happy and makes some people like us that are travailing with the Lord. They're travailing and they're in agony of what's really going on because they can see a change. They can see what was used to be called the Christian church and they can see a change and they're in agony over it to say, God, is, any, is there ever going to be sight again among your people? And these other people are so happy. Like, what's, what's, the, be, what's the problem? Like, we have everything. We're, we're doing so well. We have His Spirit. We're doing fine. But being happy because you have idols to go home to and not allowing the sword of the Spirit to ever cut you is not truth. The truth is this. Is that we are in sin. Before Jesus, before we have a true reckoning with God. And when we come to the Lord, he, God shines himself through the face of his son. And we are marvelously changed. And some, a lot of people, a lot happens to so many people. What they knew of Jesus, what they knew of God has not remained. So quickly they grieve the spirit. Left to their own imaginations. Hence where a tremendous amount of false religion has come from. People up to their own imaginations, they've been given over to this thing. Some people have given up because they don't even know that God wants them anymore. Some people really do want to try. They really do care what God thinks, but they just don't even know that there is a way to come back that if he would ever even receive them again. And other people, they know better, and they just shut it off, and they don't even care anymore. Serpents and dogs. The dog knows better, but he still feels guilty in his conscience, wants to come home. Remember the passage in Timothy where these two boys were treating the faith as if it was careless and they had to release them to the devil so they could really be gone to learn the, learn the hard way not to blaspheme God. People who have lost their conscience, people who have lost their way, sometimes they have to hit rock bottom. They have to hit something really hard in order that they ever come to themselves. They have to find themselves eating with pigs before they ever say, you know what, this is not working out. I've been left to my own imagination and my imagination has taken me down so far, it is obvious I'm wrong. I can't find a verse to back this situation up, I'm wrong. <laughs> there was a Christian comedian years ago in the 80s and he, was, he started out as a Satanist. And his religion promised that he would be better than God, he would be God. And he believed it. And he had power in, the, in, in spiritual matters. He could, he, could, he could call spirits to do things to other people. This guy's deliverance was absolutely incredible. What he had to go through to get out of that mess. But he, never wanted, he would never have gotten out of there until one day. His hair was longer than ever. Black as can be. Black as, black as a raven. Skinny from all the drugs. He looked emaciated. He looked terrible. And one day, 
he looks in the mirror and says, you're not God. You're not God. My own imagination has left me looking like this. I've been doing this long enough to know that this is not the right path. And he starts to have, now he comes to himself and says, you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready to live. And the Lord met him there. The Lord, the Lord brought somebody there to show him the truth. Some people don't want to know the truth, but I'm telling you, there's going to be a catastrophe to wake you back up, to get you to come back to yourself again. A near-death experience. Something that really makes you say, whoa. I knew a young, I knew a man that thought he never could do wrong. Never even knew that he was doing wrong. Until one day he broke his own, he broke his own thing and he realized that he was in sin. He wasn't married and his girlfriend was pregnant. And he says, you know what? Now I knew, now I know. It, that, that's what it took for him to hit it. Because <laughs> he knew he couldn't hide that. The church had to know the truth. All of a sudden the girlfriend would be looking different. It would be very easy. So he told the truth. It takes a catastrophe sometimes for people to wake back up again and to remember what they've been fighting for, to run with truth back to the Father's house and see if there was not something there for him to say, it would be better for me to be a slave in my own Father's house if he would even receive me. It's a, it's, a, it's a terrible trap to be in to think that God would not take you back. It's a lie. He will take you back. He is still a hope. He is still your strength. He's still calling you back. And he's going to weep over you more than you know. He was going to fall on your shoulder. He's going to run to you and give you a new ring. He's going to cut the fatted calf. He's going to make a big deal about it and says, you were dead, but now you're alive. The deception of thinking that you're not really rebelling. I don't mean it against my family. I told that to my dad. He's like, son, I'm embarrassed of you. And I said, why? Look at your hair. You got your hair in a mohawk. You dance, you, you prance around in these girl clothes, showing off your tattoos. He says, I, I'm sorry. I, it, it, it makes me, it's embarrassing to me. And I said, dad, I'm not doing it against you. I don't mean this against you. I love you. You're cool, man. We're, we're, we're friends. This is, this is cool to me. This is success to me. I'm like my heroes on the rock stages, Lord, Dad. That's what I said to my dad. I'm like, Dad, this is not against you. But the truth is, dead people can't see straight. Dead people don't know that it's not honoring your father. It's embarrassing to him. He's got church people to see him and say, look, at that's my son over there. That's your son? What did you do wrong? What, what, what went wrong? It doesn't matter what I think in my dead state to say I'm not trying to dishonor my dad. The truth is one thing. It's embarrassing to him. I was not honoring my father. Parents have a way of looking at their kids and say, I know what's best. And the father says, I know what's best. For my children, they should listen. Don't just say it. Don't just give me lip service like Israel. Come back. I will receive you. Come back. If you be real, I will receive you. I will restore this fellowship again. If, if you can't walk in a way that is pure and true, I cannot be in fellowship with you. Come back. I'll give you a new name. I'll make a big deal about it because once you were dead and now made alive again, now you remember that God showing his face through the sun again, real again, powerful again, mighty again. Vivid and real again. A testimony that is sure. A song that's birthed in your heart. He put a new song in your heart. He put a new word in your mouth. It was a sword of a word that brought lifting strength to your brothers and sisters in Christ. And those who were wayward, those that were dogs and serpents, the first church of the Baptist Sorceries Church, I'm telling you, God brings life back to them because they can see it. The face of Jesus in you again. back to words and pages that make sense or back to the life of Christ where we weep in his presence and say oh praise your holy name I love you Lord I honor you Lord because I know what you're calling me to 
trying to follow Jesus without the aid of the Holy Spirit showing you what that really means is, is a New Testament impossibility. It's a spiritual reality. Being born of the kingdom. And without it, we are turning into our own imaginations. It's one thing to walk away, and it's another thing to drift away without even knowing it. And this is why God doesn't want to rebuke his church the way a lot of the false prophets and immature voices out there are talking about and calling his church something that he doesn't call them. He didn't call them that to me. He didn't say this is my rebellious church. He said it's a broken church. There's a big difference between a lost sheep and a rebellious sheep. There's a difference between the dog that's, that's, that's struggling versus a, a hard-hearted, venomous snake that can look you right in the eye and lie. So my, my church is not meaning to be rebellious. I'm not talking about them. That's the chaff. They grow together. My church and the chaff, they grow together. They blow in the wind together. You can almost not distinguish them in some places because they do the same things in some ways. But my people know my voice. And they do care. And if they were able to realize what has happened, the changes that the enemy has brought into the house of God, they would do something about it. They'd say, you're right. I remember. And the true prophet brings remembrance to the hearts of those who do care. They might be struggling and say no at first, but they do want to come back because they do repent and restore fellowship again with God. It's a message of reality and it's a message of hope. It's a message of blessed hope. It is a blessed hope that God is still crying out to, that we could still be a people that says, I crawl, I crawl on my face and veil myself under you. I come underneath you who calls yourself faithful, the God full of mercy that lasts forever, a God that has been faithful to all generations. I veil myself under you. I come underneath that shadow of your wing. I come back to that place which you said, you said to come boldly, I come. This is who I'm veiling myself under. I'm coming under that wing, the one who calls himself faithful and ready to receive and will not cast us out. Lord, we come. The face of God shine through his son to our hearts. A blessed hope that cannot be mimicked like manna was not man-made. It was something that God and only God can do. And I'm talking about the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. It is the work of God and nothing else can do it but him. Hallelujah. And that's what it means to knit our hearts back to Him. To come and glorify His name in His presence all over again. In the newness of life that only He can bring. Let's pray. Praise Your name, Most High God. We thank You, Lord, for calling us to a deeper, closer place with you, Lord, that we may know thee and hear you and let you put a new song in our heart, Lord, that our passion would be vivid and real, would be tangible and effective in the community, Lord. And may thy name be glorified, Lord. If your son can get glory, do this thing in us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen.